Welcome back. I'm joined now by Congressman Glenn G.T. Thompson, Republican from the 15th Congressional District. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Uh, how are you and your family doing? Hi, Rob. Well, we're doing great, actually. Uh, telecommuting here from uh, from my dining room table. So mm -hmm. the, the only real peril I have is I'm too close to the kitchen uh, oh, yeah. and all the snacks. So. But we're working hard, round the clock. My staff and I were all telecommuting. Yeah, we, we're all uh, agreeing on that. You know, it's hard to keep that social distance from the refrigerator. Um, let's start off with how, how the yellow phase looks. You, your district is basically in mostly yellow phase right now. What changed over the weekend? Well, you know, not, not a, a lot. Obviously, businesses that uh, are able to be open now, um, you know, I... Uh, there, there's obviously still probably limitations on number of people in one place, that type of thing. But I'm glad to see it. It's it's long overdue. I you know I practiced healthcare for 28 years be, before I ran for Cong ran, ran for Congress and represented uh, uh, the people in my congressional district. And I'll be honest with you, I I've always seen a direct tie, a direct correlation between economic health and physical health. Uh, when people's inability to support themselves or families operate their businesses, uh, uh, take care of their employees. I mean, that creates a, an anxiety and a stress that results in health problems. So I was, I was glad to see that, that happen. I actually am a firm believer that, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we re really need to get our businesses open and running in the new reality, the new normal, the new standard that we have today with social distancing, uh, quite frankly, with, with what our mothers taught us to do, good personal hygiene, and good sanitation. All right, let's go down to Washington in our minds, since we're, we're here in Pennsylvania. Uh, first of all, do you think the House will actually come physically come back to Washington this week? I sure hope so. The Senate's back. Yeah, they've been, they um, have been back, which, which brings me to this. I mean, the Democrats would like to see another stimulus plan or a relief bill. Could that be approaching $2 trillion, the price tag of the first bill? And what would it do? Would it provide that funding for state governments that have been out, have, many have been out there, both red and blue, asking for some type of help for the stall in the economy during the pandemic? Yeah, well, Rob, you know, we've already, it's, it's mind-blowing to think that we've passed uh, four pieces of legislation. I went back in the middle of this pandemic twice to vote on the last two. And the total, total bill so far is approaching $3 trillion. That's mind-blowing, thinking that the first one was just March 11th. And so, you know, I know the Democratic leadership is, is, is in the media talking about how they need to spend more money. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if we need to do that, you know, because of the economy, because to stimulate economic recovery, and we do have segments of, of our economy that, that, that are stalled and going to remain stalled for some time because of the anxiety and the fear that some people have developed, obviously. Um, yeah. But we've already invested a, a tremendous amount of money I'd like to see that money be deployed, first of all, and I'd like to see how it has an impact. And then we measure what outcomes, what other remaining needs are. For example, Pennsylvania's received $4.7 billion uh, in direct cash influx into Harrisburg. 45% of that, 55% of that is for the state. 45% of that, the governor is supposed to deploy out into uh, counties and local municipalities. That has not occurred yet. And so, you know, that money needs to be deployed. We need to see how that's, that's filling the gap of uh, new costs because of COVID-19. And, and quite frankly, I believe that, uh, you know, there are some uh, revenue that has been um, reduced dramatically because of, of directly because of COVID-19 and those monies should be used to fill that as well. It sounds like you're pretty much in agreement with Senate uh, Leader Mitch McConnell in that saying that right now is not the time to go back and rush through another piece of legislation. Um, because we don't really know how the first pieces are really working out just yet. Yeah, that's correct. I've always been one to believe that we should legislate based on science and data on the facts and not legislate based on emotion. And I, I think this is clearly a divide between right now what the Senate, uh, or I'm sorry, the Democratic leadership in Washington wants to do. They're kind of pushing this based on emotion. Uh, let's, let's, let's look at the data. Let's look, see... Uh, how have we, uh, how well are these investments done? And the goal should be threefold save lives, save jobs, and save our economy. Okay, before I run out of time, tell me about the Grocer Act. So I know you're not, you're not completely against helping people out, out during these times. Oh, no. No, I voted for all four of the bills that we've had. 
Uh, and and I've introduced a piece of legislation. I always make every bill I do bipartisan. So a shout out to Co Congressman Dwight Evans in Philadelphia, who is my Democratic co-lead. Uh, the Grocer Act is giving retailers and our convenience employees relief. Uh, essentially what it does, it's a way of saying thank you to all the men and women that are showing up as life essential employees at our grocery stores and our convenience stores. You know, Rob, I believe that they probably have more interaction with the general public than any other position that there is. Uh, especially every time there was an episode of panic buying, you know, they're, they're interacting uh, really face to face with a, a tremendous amount of people and they're getting up, they're going to work, they're, they're sanit they're shocking, uh, stocking shelves or sanitizing and they're, and they're serving our families, making sure we can get the food that we need. And so all this does is provide a federal tax relief uh, from the period February 15th to June 15th. Uh, they would pay no federal income tax just as a simple way of saying thank you for being on the front lines of this COVID-19. U.S. Congressman Glenn Thompson, I want to say thank you for joining us on Face the State Live this week. We really appreciate it. I hope things go smoothly up there in your district, the 15th, uh, with your moving on to yellow. Hopefully you'll get to green sooner or later. And uh, I want to thank you for your work in Washington and good luck with the Grocer uh, Act. I think that's a that's a neat idea. Those health care, I mean those grocery workers in the food supply chain are so important. They sure are, Rob. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be on with you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Glenn Thompson, our guest, Congressman Glenn Thompson. We'll be right back with the final word after this.